This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome everyone, friends and members on a Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. We are glad that you have joined us this morning, this last Sunday in 2020. We rejoice and we are grateful for how God has kept us and blessed us and comforted us in the midst of this season. So as we enter into worship on this second day, as we celebrate Kwanzaa, the Kwanzaa principle of Kuji Chakalia, let us go to our amazing God in our opening prayer. Please join me as we pray. Oh, holy and magnificent Lord, on this second day of Kwanzaa, we celebrate the principle of Kuji Chakalia. And we ask that you would illuminate our hearts and minds to build self-determination in order to stand our ground in the face of opposition and turmoil. Build within us uh, Ujima, unity on this earth, and embed in our hearts Imani, faith to endure the course. Although these times are hard, may we be forever possible by your spirit and by your strength as we persevere. Let us embrace the mystery and the spirit of life as we celebrate the goodness of Kwanzaa and the African heritage. Oh God, we give thanks to you for all the blessings of earth and honor for the creation of you. We ask that the spirit of Kwanzaa be infused in every aspect of our lives, that we may consistently remember the value of family, community, and nationhood. May we seek unity and self-determination to strive to exemplify the best of ourselves in family and in culture. We give thanks for companions on this journey in the struggle for freedom and justice. Our roots in the soil and soul of Mother Africa reach far and wide and for that we are grateful. For the ancestors who have, uh, who have blazed a trail for us Oh God, we are grateful. Now, oh God, kindle in our souls the same strength and tenacity and wisdom of our ancestors so that we too may keep up the good fight and persevere in this season. Oh God, we pray for the power of your word in this season to come forth by your Holy Spirit, by your authority through your manservant. May we always remember, oh God, your love and your strength and your wisdom. And may, as we seek to persevere and continue the call and the plan that you have for our lives, may we be encouraged to live lives of service, humility, faith, love, and strength. Bless and keep us in solidarity with one, one to another. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. I say an amen. Amen. Hallelujah and praise be to God. Again, we thank you for joining us in this virtual space. We are grateful to God to have continued to move forward and reinvent ourselves as we worship the Lord in this unforeseen season in 2020. So I just want us to celebrate all that God has done in our lives and all that God has brought us through. Can we just begin to celebrate in the chat? What is your celebration to God this morning? We are truly grateful for all that the Lord has done. We welcome everyone who is joining us if you are a first time visitor, welcome to this space where we worship the Lord with all that we have. We are a mission-minded church. We are a praying church. And we believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask or think according to the power that is within us, that is within us. So we welcome you.
and I live my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be our sweet, sweet sound. excellent God, a wonderful God, a powerful God, a God that sits high and looks slow, but a God who takes care of all of our needs. We thank you, God, as we've come to worship you on this last Sabbath day of the year. But God, it is the beginning of a new day and a new life for somebody. For somebody, God, comes into your presence today grateful. Somebody comes thankful. Somebody comes, God, knowing that if it had not been for you on their side, where would they be? And so, God, we exalt your name, we lift your name, we praise your holy name. And we pray, God, that as we continue to worship you on this day, that not our will, but thy will be done. God, now put us on the same sheet of music as we sing your praises. God, put us on the same page as we read your word. God, put us in the same pew as we hear the proclamation of truth. God, we know that without you, we can't do or be anything. But with you, God, all things are possible. Now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our most blessed Redeemer, for you are excellent in all the earth. Jesus, the Lord, our Savior. And all who are able, please say amen. Amen, amen. To God be the glory, great things, God is doing in this space. We greet you on this Sabbath day, this 
fourth Sunday of December, the last Sunday of this calendar year, but most importantly, a day of worship and praise. We want to thank God for all of those that make this service possible. For in the house right now is uh, God's best musicians on this side of the Jordan, so I'm grateful for them in the house. Are the best technicians uh, that God could send to 1421 States of Avenue on this side of the Jordan. We are grateful Pastor Lanson is in the house, but she's also on the computer right now being that virtual pastor along with Dr. Carroll. And we're grateful also uh, for those who are working behind the scenes. Uh, there are many moving parts to bring you this service today, and I am, uh, I am peacock proud and honeymoon happy to be a part of this staff. For our centurions, our COVID-19 staff, those persons that make this a wonderful and safe environment to preach and proclaim God's word, uh, we say thank you. Today, today, if you have your word, I invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 2, reading verses 41 through 52 from a NIV translation of the word. Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Let us hear the word of Almighty God. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to custom. And after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, he traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I want to call to your attention verse 49 today and reading to you from a new King James version of this text. Here's what it says. And he said to them, why do you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? And he said, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And today, my friends, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement on this last Sabbath worship Sunday in 2020, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment preach and teach on the subject being about the business. Being about the business. My friends, when you don't know your purpose, you can be misused. When you don't know your value, those around you will never benefit. A 320-year-old Stradivarius cello was returned to the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra after being lost for three weeks. It was mistakenly left outside by the lead cellos and it was picked up in robbery by a bicycler, but they caught him on video. He then left the cello, a 320-year-old Stradivarius, by a garbage can, and a 29-year-old nurse picked it up, put it in her trunk, and drove around for two days on the way to her boyfriend's house, who was a cabinet maker. A 320-year-old Stradivarius cello was then to be made into a CD rack. 
Understand, y'all, this 320-year-old Stradivarius, Dr. Monroe, was worth $3.5 million. It was stolen by a bicyclist, left alone beside a dumpster, and a 29-year-old nurse picked it up, put it in her trunk, Minister Donna, and was going to make a CD rack out of it. Again, when you don't know your value, people will suffer. When you don't know your purpose, you will be misused. Let me share with you another story, my friend. Bill Broby was a, was a, a cafeteria manager. Bill, y'all, suffered blindness at 10 years old and never graduated high school. He served as a cafeteria manager for 35 years. But let me share his story. 16 years ago, Bill graduated with a 4.0 GPA from this high school because he discovered a computer program that you can scan material and for a blind person, it would read it out to you. Bill, y'all, did not have a high school diploma, but 16 years ago, y'all, he graduated with a 4.0 from this high school where he was a cafeteria manager. He's on his way, y'all, to get a master's degree, y'all, uh, in, in behavior science. Again, when you don't know your purpose, you can be misused when you don't know your value people around you will suffer I think it was from the pen of Lance Armstrong when Lance said it this way his book uh, every second counts he says that you cannot determine or you cannot really picture how suddenly catastrophic illness will come upon you one morning you can wake up and your lungs don't work your livers don't work your your, your eyes don't work and, and your organs have shut down you there is no planning for this it just happens and all all of a sudden you're faced with a catastrophic illness, but when you are put on the deck of life and you recognize you have less in front of you than you have behind you, you start living with a purpose. And when you wake up in the morning, you don't wake up complaining, you wake up saying, I thank you, Lord for one more day. I thank you, Lord, for one more chance. I thank you, Lord, for one more month. I thank you, Lord, for one more year. But you've been what? So, so good to me. When you don't know your purpose, you can be misused. When you don't know your value, those around you will suffer. I think it was Rick Warren in his book that many of us have read The Purpose Driven Life. It was listed on the New York Times bestseller list as a self-help book, but Rick Warren says it's not a self-help book. It's really a directional guide to go back to your creator. For the first line in his book says simply, it's not about you. And I think I'm talking to somebody this morning because I want you to recognize that 2020 has come and just about gone. 2020 has shown us some things that we never thought we would see. 2020 has put us in some positions and circumstances and situations that if it had not been for the grace of God, many of us could have gone cuckoo for cocoa puffs. But thanks be to God that we serve a God who sits high and looks so thanks be the God we serve a God that looks beyond our faults and still meets our needs. Thanks be the God we serve a God who, who is able to heal the broken heart, who's able to soothe the sin sick soul. Thank, thanks be the God that we have a God who recognizes that we've got purpose and we've got meaning and we've got value and when we recognize those around us will benefit from them. You see my friends, I don't want you to miss the purpose and the point of this sermon today as we go to the text because it's, it's dedicated to teach us some valuable lessons about the business of Almighty God. Look at what the Bible tells us for it gives us a clear warning that it says in verse 41, his parents, Jesus' parents went down to Jerusalem, which was customary for the feast of 
Passover. The Passover feast is very significant in the life of the Jewish community. Why? Because it was at Passover when the deaf angel came to the children of Israel and if you had the blood, the mark of the cross on your doorpost, death did not come. The children of Israel kept this in mind, y'all, that they would go to a festival according to Exodus and according to Deuteronomy. The men were charged to go to this festival, but thanks be to God, the men, the man in Jesus' life took the mama and the son with them. Somebody hear what I'm saying because I think it's important for us to always embrace that it's not just when one person goes to worship, it's when a family goes to worship that the family stays together. The Bible says that the parents of Jesus took him to the feast of the Passover and when they went to the feast of the Passover, they stayed there, but in the presence of the Passover feast, Jesus, the Passover offering, the true Passover was enlightened by the power of Almighty God. The Bible tells us that as he is there in the presence in Jerusalem and with, with the scribes and with the authors of the law, he is sitting and he is listening. He is asking questions and he is giving, imparting back to them information. Twelve years old, Jesus is in the midst of scribe. A middle school child, shall we say, is in the midst of those who are scholarly trained, theologically astute and able to pour into him. But Jesus is pouring back into them. Somebody look at me right now because there's a whole lot of folk with some school work, some school sense, but ain't got no common sense. And you know exactly who I'm talking to because you see, it's not what you study, it's what is inside of you. It's not what you read is what is reading you. It's not necessarily what you take, it's what you give out. The Bible says that as Jesus is in the midst of the scribes, Jesus' mom and daddy and the caravan, they leave the Passover and they go back home. But you know, I just have to drop my kickstand there parenthetically and say here it was, they were going to celebrate the Passover offering, but the true Passover was with them. Mm. They were going to celebrate a religious tradition and holiday to remember and commemorate the goodness of the Lord. And here the goodness of the Lord was right there in their midst. I know we just came out of the Christmas holiday and I know we had a wonderful time celebrating in a pandemic way. Go ahead and put an asterisk beside that because I know, I know, I know this time next year, once you got your vaccine, it's going to be like, it's going to be on like neck bone. Everybody going to be party like it's 1999. But in the midst of this year's Christmas celebration, we, 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 we celebrated from a distance and, and, and we, we exchanged gifts from a distance. But did anybody ever recognize the closeness that God was trying to be with us all year long? The closeness that God revealed God's self to us all year long. How God opened up the pages of his scripture and his word and showed us things that this pandemic would not have otherwise allowed us to see. How God has made us cut away some of the unnecessary per peripheral and things around us that normally we would have been holding on to. You see, this pandemic, y'all, it has helped us realize what is necessary. Can you say necessary? Because I want you to recognize that the Bible gives us an interesting word when Jesus responds back to his mom and daddy saying, but did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Did you not know I must be in the presence of those around me? You see, Jesus says, and said, but did you not know that I must be in my father's, about my father's business? In essence, he was saying it was necessary, necessary. And I got to park there parenthetically, brother, brother, brother the Lambert, and let's let people recognize that sometimes, y'all, if we don't pay attention to the necessary things, the unnecessary stuff will creep up. Let me back it up and say that again. Sometimes, y'all, if we we don't pay attention 
to the small stuff, the small print. The Bible says never forsake small beginnings because small beginnings are the beginning of a great big end. If we don't pay attention to the small things, the unnecessary things will come upon us. I like the slide that I found y'all about a father with two children and the father with two children under the caption simply says my father didn't tell me how to live. He lived and watched and let, let me watch him do it. My father, my mother, my parent didn't tell me how to live, but they let me watch them and then I learned how to live. The pandemic has taught us how to really live in the presence of Almighty God. It's, it's taught us to go back to our knees, to go back to the word, to go back to the things that were most important. You know, I was teasing Dr. Monroe how sometimes we can get our focus focusing on the wrong thing and it's amazing it is how God has put us in a space and a place to focus on the true things of Almighty God. The word, uh, the word, and the word and the word and the word and, and the word and the word. Help me out, Brother David. It's amazing how it is that when we focus on the word that life changes. And the good news, y'all, is that when we see the word from the Amplified Bible, here's what it says. And he said to them, how is it that you had to look for me? Did you not see and know that it was necessary as a duty for me to be in my father's house? That is, it was necessary necessary. I just got to hang out there and talk about the necessities of life. You see, when you, when you understand what necessary means, you will understand that it's a Greek word. And I knew Pastor Lance and Dr. Carroll would be on the line. So I had to do my homework and my homework to understand the word for necessary is day I, day I, with the accent over the eye. Come on, help me, Minister Donna. I'm working now. The Greek word for necessary simply says it's a verb shows the action of something being necessary. Phonetically spelling is D-I-E. You say die. But no, that is necessary. It's necessary that some things die before they can live. Ooh, that was a good word. It's necessary that the seed falls into the ground before it grows up. It's necessary that you cut off some things so you can grow. You can't have a beautiful rose bush unless you prune it, cut it away right now. You can't have some peaches in the springtime unless you prune the peach tree right now. You can't have a church that's about something unless you cut some folk dead. Ooh, did I mean to say that? You got to, it's necessary. Can you just say it's, nece it's necessary for you to let some stuff go in 2020? Don't take it in the 21. It's necessary for you to let some people go in 2020. Don't take it in the 2021. It's necessary that you stop using your smartphone on dumb people. It's necessary that you let go of some stinking thinking. You just, it's, it's just necessary. I don't know what it is, but can you give voice right there in the comment of something you need to let go of? It's necessary that he go, that she go, that we go our separate ways. It's necessary that you release and release. Mm, okay, okay. See, the Bible is quick to point to us that Jesus talks about the necessities of his life. He said to us in Matthew 16, 21, from, from then on, Jesus began to say to his disciples, it's necessary that I go to Jerusalem. Mark 8, 31, he began to teach them, it's necessary the Son of Man must suffer many things rejected by the elders of the church. Luke 4 tells us, Jesus said, it is necessary that I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God, of the towns, because that is why I was sent. The Bible tells us in Luke 13, Jesus says, go tell that old fox that I will drive out demons and heal people today, tomorrow, and the third day, because it is necessary. Can you say necessary? You see, I want us to recognize that this pandemic has taught us things that were necessary and things that were 
unnecessary. And I just got to say, if Black Lives Matter is necessary, you put some green money in a black bank. If Black Lives Matter is necessary, that you reach back and help people who don't have. If Black Lives Matter is necessary, that you just don't let that movement stop because it's cold. You see, you still got people on the street who need to stand up for justice. You still have people in the White House who don't understand that you got to serve all of God's people. It's net okay. Let me see if I can help you understand what happens when things become necessary. Because when it becomes necessary, you will hear what Jesus say in Luke 4, Luke 2, 26, 46. It says, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Luke 49, Luke 2, 49 says, he said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that it was necessary that I must be in my father's house? When you recognize that God has a calling on your life, you will also recognize that where you are and what you're doing is necessary, necessary. Let me see if I can help you understand this. Come here, please, Donella Frazier. Donella Frazier is a 17-year-old high school student from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Danella Frazier, y'all, her attorney says she's like the modern day Rosa Parks. She didn't mean to get attention upon her, but because of her actions, y'all, her actions helped change the world. Okay, you didn't get it. You see, Danella Frazier, y'all, was that teenager who with her cell phone recorded the murder, y'all, of George Floyd. And thanks be to God, this 17-year-old who worked at the shopping mall, this 17-year-old high school of y'all did not stop. Now it was traumatic because we don't want our 17 year olds to ever witness a murder but because she was able to take her camera and record George Floyd's death y'all the world began to stand up for righteousness. This 17 year old recognized it was necessary to make a difference and I just want to drop that into somebody's spirit on this Sabbath day this last Sunday of the year that everything you have gone through has been necessary. Everything you have experienced this year has been necessary. Everything that you have put your arms around has been necessary. Why? Because it's a part of your faith. And know this, my friends, a faith that's not tested can't be trusted. Okay. What you have gone through, what I have gone through, what we have experienced, y'all, has been a testing of our faith. And a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. But I think I'm looking at somebody right now who says, Reverend, I've passed the test. Reverend, I've got a passing grade. Reverend, I've overcome because I knew the test of 2020 was getting me ready for my testimony in 2021. I knew the test that I went through by losing loved ones in 2020 would help me live differently in 2021. I knew the test that I had to go through in losing my job, my J-O-B, that's my journey to broke. Now help me understand I'm going to be my own boss. I knew the test that I had to go through with my family, my friends, people not believing in me would now believe in the God that I serve. You see, friends, a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. And when we understand what happens about being about the business, let me go quickly because I don't want you to miss it. When you be about the business of Almighty God, it's there in the text. You've got to be in worship. Okay? Jesus was captivated by the worship experience. And because he was in worship, the question that Mary and Joseph was asking to him, not what were you doing, but where were you doing? And if you know where you are, you know what to do. If you know where you are, you know why you're there. You see, that's what Simon Sinek talks about, understanding the necessity, the necessities of why. If you know your why, your how is secondary and 
your what becomes primary. But you got to understand your why. Why is it that I do what I do? Why is it that I stand the way I stand? Why is it that I speak the way I speak? Well, I do it because of the love of Almighty God. Why is it that I serve like I serve? Why is it that I pray like I pray? Why is it that I give like I give because I serve a loving God? Why is it that I witness? Why is it that I confess? Why is it that I testify because I serve a loving God? Is there anybody here right there who will help me praise God because you know your why? You know that if the Lord had not been on your side, you could have been dead and gone. You know that God has brought you from a mighty, mighty long way. You know that your why is more important than your how because God gives you your what. And if you understand your what, your how follows your what, but your why gives you a reason to sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches over me, 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 me. The business, the business, business. We've got to be about the business, y'all. And let me just give the application quickly to you because I want you to get this. When you are about the business, you will do some sitting, some listening, and some asking. You see, when you're being about the business, you will sit in the presence of those in worship. When you be about the business, you will listen. That's studying the word of Almighty God. When you be about the business, you are asking, what can I do to serve you? You see, it's all about what, what the Bible teaches us in, 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 second, in, in the second book of Acts when it says they gather together daily for worship, for study, for breaking of the bread, and for fellowship. The church, the business of the church, y'all, is about worship, is about studying, is about serving. It is about connecting others to Almighty God. The business of the church, my friends, is about making a difference in the life of somebody else. And I want you to recognize that when you are sitting and listening and asking, there are three things that you will do in your life that comes from this text. There's a sense of intentionality. There's a sense, y'all, of humility. And there's a sense of authenticity. And I knew I was going to you go, go to C. N. Jenkins and use some words and I had to break it down like a fraction. So I've got examples for intentionality. Come here, uh, uh, Senator, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Understand what intentionality means for her. She says, you have to see and smell and feel the circumstances of people to really understand them. You see, when you live with a sense of intentionality, you recognize, my friends, I've got to be and where you are and walk in your shoes. The church in 2020 has taught us that the church in 2021 must be intentional. We can't wait for folk to drive by for. 1821 Statesville Avenue and just come in and sit and we present to them. You have to be intentional about sharing the word of Almighty God. You've got to go where folk go, hurt where they hurt, feel what they feel, and love like they love. You've got to love everybody, or as we say in my neighborhood, everybody. And everybody means the single, the married, the widowed, the divorced, the queer, the LBGTQ. It means you've got to love love everybody. Everybody means those with some money and those ain't got no money, those with time and those ain't got time for you. You got to love everybody with intentionality, but not only with intentionality, here comes humility. Can I can I call a major shout out for, for the form of the late uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Boehner Ginsburg, Sister Ruth RG, RBG, you know who she is. She said so eloquently, real change enduring change happens one step at a time. Real change happens one day at a time. Come on, 12 step. You know what it means. You have to take it one day at a time. You have to pray, God give me the strength to accept the things I cannot change, change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. But I got to do it what? One day at a time. You've got to have intentionality about yourself when you're about the business. You have to have humility about yourself when you're about the business of God. You have to also have some authenticity, authenticity. You see, I can't say that without going to Anderson, South Carolina. I can't say that without giving a resume of a student who found themselves at Howard University not being able necessarily to study abroad 
But then he got a word from a Denzel Washington who wrote a check to make sure that he and his classmates could study abroad. I'm talking about none other y'all than Chadwick Boseman. I'm talking none other y'all than that character who said, I will not play a drug addict on a soap opera. I'm going to play Third Good Marshall. I'm going to play James Brown. I'm going to play Jackie Robinson. I'm going to play the people who mean a lot to my people. And it was Chadwick Boseman. Come on, Wakanda forever. You've got to understand he recognized his authenticity and somebody needs to hear what I'm saying today that the church of Jesus Christ must be authentic. The church of Jesus Christ must be real. The day and the time is out y'all for us perpetrating and pretending to be what we are not. Officers, hear what I'm saying. You are deacons. You are elders to be installed. I called you officers because that's what you are but you become spiritual leaders when you start praying. You are an officer because you've been elected, but you are a spiritual leader when somebody says, I need you to read the scripture. You're an officer because your name's in the bulletin, but you are a spiritual leader when somebody needs someone to hold their hands as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You are an officer because that's what you've been elected to do, but you are a spiritual leader, elders and deacons, when you recognize I can't go without my starting my day without God. I can't end my day with our prayer in the Lord. You see, when you recognize about the being about the business of Almighty God, you can't help but to remember Brianna. When you recognize being about the business of Almighty God, you can't help but understanding, yes, I've got to train and teach my children at home because school is now at home, but I'm not going to make the home a place of the word of Almighty. You don't have to make excuses about having devotions with your children when you homeschool schooling. You can open up the word of Almighty God and teach just save the Lord because that is about the business of Almighty. When you are being about the business, you recognize that you didn't come this far by yourself. You didn't come to stay. And I know that 2020 has been tough. I know it has been rough. We have not seen each other in this sanctuary since the second Sunday in March. I miss you. I hope you miss me. But the, until we come back together again, we're going to have to flip some things. And as we flip some things, we're going to have to readjust some things. If we adjust some things, we're going to have to re-identify some things. If we re-identify some things, we're going to have to put our arms around a different group of folk who we were not used to seeing back in March of 2020. But when we go back, whatever that is, God's going to help us flip the script to be more about the business, more about the business. Okay, okay. I don't know if they understood what I'm saying, Brother David, but when you understand the importance of flipping the script, you will also recognize what God has called you to be and to do. This year, we lost some great folk in 2020. We, David, uh, was it David Stern, the uh, NBA guy, died on January 1st last year. We lost Sean Connery. Uh, 007. We we lost we lost a guy from Jeopardy. What was his name? Uh, Alex Trebek. Uh, Ruth Ruth Ginsburg. We talked about her. Of course, John Lewis. We lost him. But but one in particular that that I just wanted to share that helped me with this was a three-time Grammy Award winner, a gentleman who who basically had to go to a pawn shop to get a good talk to start playing at a nightclub. He was in the Navy and he was working in a factory making toilets, but he found himself really coming back to music. That's where his passion was. He, he wrote songs like Lovely Day and he wrote songs like Lean On Me. But, but the song, the song that I want you to recognize is that he wrote a song that says, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine. I'm talking about Bill Withers. And some of y'all know Smoking Bill with us from, 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 from Los Angeles, but Bill found himself doing music, y'all, music that spoke to the soul, music that helped you understand, music that embraced the culture. I like Bill Weathers, and as a matter of fact, when I wake up in the morning, I'm waking up to the tune Lovely Day, and when I, when I go through things, I, I got to say, lean on me, lean on me, but, 
But, but this song, Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone, what's interesting about this, y'all, is that it was recorded, recorded on a 45. I don't know if y'all know what a 45 are. I got some here. If you can, Brother Jerome, this is a Gordy label. You see the Gordy label back, back in the day? You see that? And then, you know, some other labels, a T-neck right there label. That was one. Oh, here's, here's one. Here's, here's one here. You remember the Motown label? That, if you got a 45 with a Motown label there, you know. Oh, y'all y'all remember the Tamala labels, right? Yeah, that, that, that was none other, none other than, none other than. I, I like that. Of course, you know, you had the soul label. Soul label. Now, now what happens, y'all, is that that the DJs, they would take your record and they would play your record on the radio. And as your record got played on the radio, it became popular. Now, what's interesting, Dr. Monroe, the song that y'all are playing right now, it was played on the radio on the B side. Now, if you know anything about records old school, you can just type old school in the chat right there. The A side was the lead. But if you flipped it over to B side, that was not going to be the song. And you see, a DJ recognized that on the A side was Harlem. That's Bill Withers' song, but on the B side was Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone. Okay, y'all not getting it. You see, the DJ wanted, supposed to play the A side, but because of circumstance, he flipped it over on the B side. And when he flipped it over on the B-side, Sister Margaret, the song went from not being known to being on the top 40 for more than 30 weeks. Number three, they viewing Ain't No Sunshine. Okay, it was the B-side, Minister Donna. You see, somebody looking at me right now, you've been playing 2020 on the A-side. And God says, I need you to flip it to the B-side. Do I have some help in here this Sunday morning? It's gonna help me flip your script, flip your record. Is that anybody say I was down, but in 21, I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna be up. Is anybody in here who say I was not confident in 2020, but in 21, I'm gonna say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is anybody watching right now who could just give God praise for what you come through? You were looking at the A side of your life, but God says, if you just stick with me, I'm gonna flip it and make a hit on the B side. You see, you see, when you recognize that God is in charge of your life, you can go and sing that song that Ernest Pugh sung to us. That simply let us know that God is all that we need. The Holy Spirit is all that we need. And this morning, I want you to, yes, flip your record on the other side, but recognize that God is what you need to get through 2020 and into 2021. Today, today, I give you that invitation. And what a good day to come to the Lord at the end of a year, at the end of a month, at the end of a time that God is saying, you are you are the one that I've died for, that I've come back for. And we are saying, God, you are all I need. Why? Because we're wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the love of Almighty God. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you this Sabbath day that you've allowed us to understand what being about the business is. And the business, God, is to be with you in worship. The business is to be with you in your word. The business, God, is to be with you in the study. The God, the business is to be about you in relationships. So today we pray, God, that someone hearing this word will say, I need to be about the business of getting my soul right, my heart right, getting my life right with the Lord. So God, right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that someone will release and someone will let go. But more importantly, that someone will grab hold of your unchanging word. For your word says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. The word says that we acknowledge you as the King of kings, the Lord of lords, we shall be saved. The word says that we will just simply say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know, we shall be saved. 
God, we want to be about your business today, so we're praying that somebody receives and accepts this word, that somebody, God, connects to the truth. And so we pray, God, that those even who've been with you that may have felt distance, now God will flip their record on the other side, and they will see that the B side is really where they're going to be in 2021. God, we thank you for who you are and whose we are. And we pray to you, God, that someone today will receive you as their Lord. In your son's name, we offer this prayer. Amen. My friends, what a joy it is to extend that invitation, but most importantly, what an honor it is to welcome you into this body of Christ. And the thing that Obviously, our virtual worship has taught us you don't really have to be in Charlotte to be a part of this ministry. So if you want to right now, let's tap your name, your interest. Pastor Lance and Dr. Carol are right there to receive that information. Do know, my friends, that we are a praying church and a church that believes that God moves the power of prayer. So if you're desirous of prayer, simply call the church, email us, let us know. We'd be more than happy to pray with you, our deacons, our elders, those persons to which we will install briefly, shortly, but those persons who have been called by God, we are called to be spiritual leaders. So we want you to know that this is a spiritual warehouse where you can be fed and you can grow. I want to thank you so much for joining us for worship today, in particular for tuning in ever since the third Sunday in, 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 in March shall we say, to our virtual worship. Thank you so much for coming by the church and dropping off goods and supplies. Thank you for those who go out every Tuesday and minister to those in our community. We're so grateful for the people that, that made masks back at the beginning of the year and, and continue just to give and pour into the community. We thank God for our parents and our children who recognize that a family that prays together is a family that stays together. Pastor Lance and Dr. Carroll and all of our leaders of the church, we're so grateful for how you have done an extraordinary job in 2020. And we thank you for this wonderful group here, our musicians, our technicians. We thank God for those who uh, just come to make sure that we're staying connected with you. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to give a blessing at the end of this service. The benediction will come as we conclude our installation. Pastor Lance has already made reference to us now, so we want you to get off the Zoom, get off the Facebook. Go ahead and dial in right now uh, to, to get off the YouTube, dial into the Zoom, that we will give our benediction on that side. And if you're going to be just leaving and going uh, to the rest of your day, do know that I love you, God loves you. We're praying for you. Have a wonderful Sabbath and a wonderful rest of 2020.